They had gone with heavy hearts to the tomb on that morning with spices to attend Jesus' body. This was be, to be the last loving service they could do for him. There must have been fear mixed in with their grief. Not just the fear of death, but the fear that all of their hopes and dreams had died along with Jesus, and that they too lay lifeless in the grave. Something in the words and actions and life of this man had been different. They had experienced a taste of transformed way of living. They had gone with him around Galilee and then on to Jerusalem. They had used their financial resources and other skills to support Jesus and the crowds that followed him. This man, who was redefining what they thought life could be, was now gone. Cut down by the powers and principalities of their world. How would they return to the life that was before him? You know, they stayed near through those most painful of hours, even after the men closest to him had fled, waiting and watching, hoping against hope that something, someone was going to intercede. Oh, Jesus had talked about this being the outcome of his way of life, and unlike the men, these women seemed to get it. But now that it had happened, the women realized, too, that they hadn't really believed it would end this way. But ever faithful, this morning they go to do what women always did, anoint and care for the body of one deeply loved. They take that first step back into a life that was. And on the way, they wrestle with a really practical question. They, the men are gone, so who is going to roll away that massive stone? How would they be able to attend to the dead without anyone to help them? No doubt they're concocting solutions as they are walking and then are surprised when they reach the tomb and discover that the stone has already been pushed aside. They the place that held their deepest love and their darkest fears, only to find nothing, no thing, no body. Jesus is not there. Instead, they discover a young man dressed in a white robe sitting to one side, and they are frightened. But the young man speaks to him, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he's going on ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. You can imagine them, yes, yes, we're looking for Jesus, and we know he's been crucified. But wait, he's been raised? He's not here? He's gone on to Galilee? I mean, yes, he had said something about this, but really, really, could it be? And if that is true, well, what now? He's gone back to the place where he healed and taught and fed people. Gone back to where we first heard the whispers of a new life. Where we began to believe that we were beloved of God and that we had something to offer, a role to play in this kingdom of God that he talked about. This kingdom that he lived and suddenly a whole new fear gripped them. This new life really, really was actually real. This kingdom of God that Jesus talked about was really here. And that risen one wants us to meet him back in Galilee to go on living it. 
like he said. The sudden enormity of it hit him. They didn't have to go back to living the way it was. They could continue to share in the kingdom of God. They could live in community of equity and dignity. They could serve and be served. But look at the cost. The powers and the principalities recognize how dangerous this kingdom could be, would be. They weren't going to be ready to give up or roll up their sleeves. They would keep resisting this kingdom. Go to Galilee. Take up this life. Take up the cross. Oh, that's that's what he meant. Well, now they're to go tell the disciples, the rest of the disciples about this. And the women received the good news that Christ had been raised from the dead, and now they needed to change. They needed to change from people who perform rites for the dead to apostles who bear witness to the God of life and love, of justice and truth. They needed to change from people who are fearful and frightened to people who boldly proclaim that God's life is stronger than any death, that God's love is stronger than any hate, and that God's peace is more powerful than human violence. To proclaim that, to live that, is to experience resurrection. It is to become, in fact, resurrection people in a Good Friday world. Could it be? So they went out, and they fled. They fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The place where the women dwell at that moment is the place that you and I live day in and day out. It's situated on a line between hope and fear, teetering between disappointment and attainment. It's wondering if we're fools to hope for a world that's reliable and just and to work for lives that are meaningful and rich and full. Like they, you and I know that resurrection is a game changer. If it's true, then death has been bested. And then we lose our excuses for taking refuge in cynicism or hopelessness. If like the angel promises these women, Jesus goes before us, then on Easter we rightly ask, where will he lead us? What will it cost us to take up this resurrection way of living? You know, new life might just be scarier than our old familiar deaths. Who who will roll away the stone for us? Who will roll away the stone for others? Who will open the tombs that we thought contained death and endings and despair and injustice and hatred so that we actually discover there is new beginnings, joy, restitution, reconciliation, love, and life? Who will roll away the stones? Well, the answer is we will. We will, if we're resurrection people, we'll roll away the stones with God's help. We'll live the kingdom that challenges the powers and principalities of our day and witness to the life-giving, death-defying power of God. And like the women on that first Easter day, you and I are faced with a choice. Life or death? New beginnings or old endings? The women ultimately did choose life. They didn't stay stuck behind their stone of fear. They ran away, overcome by the reality of the good news and awed into silence. But they did find their voice. And because they did, so can we. Today it's our turn. 
It's our turn to decide whether the great good news of this morning and the invitation to a whole new way of life is really for us. It's our turn to keep on living life as it is or to choose to live in this kingdom life of God made manifest through the risen one leads us and goes before us. This life of never-ending possibilities, of justice and truth, of peace and reconciliation. So on this Easter morn, how about we roll some stones away together and find new life? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.